Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Diamond Select Marvel Select Green Goblin figure. Dated on the back of the card is 2016, which would make this figure two years old. And I found this at a comic book store, having not reviewed it already, and I thought it'd be perfect to pick up and have a look at now. The key to a good review is to be able to provide as much information about a toy as you possibly can to the viewers. Let me provide for you right now how tall Green Goblin stands. And as we look at the tape measure together, it's safe to assume that Green Goblin is close to 7 inches tall. Before we have a look at his accessories, I guess this constitutes an accessory, but we'll look at his display base first. And that is the Goblin Glider, a rather long representation of the Goblin Glider. Uh, this one specifically, well, this one differs specifically because it does also have the exhaust. And the exhaust is what keeps the glider up. In some ways, it's good, as I do love the translucent nature of the plastic that they've got coming out from the back exhaust. It gives it a slightly smokier kind of wash over the top or airbrushing in front there. The only downside though to it is the way it's angled. If I lay it face down, or laying it completely down, you probably can see it right off the bat, it always points up. There's no means to actually adjust it, so it's always gonna be pointing up, which doesn't look too bad instead, until you start adding the Green Goblin to it. And uh, to do that, of course, we'll just go ahead and bend his legs, move his arms out of the way here and we'll slide one foot underneath or through the struts there and we'll attach it there's a little peg right there do the same on the other side slide the foot through and then we will attach it via the peg right there once you've got that all situated you can of course compensate for goblin's posture but you'll see right off the bat it does make him always angled. At the very least, if they had only brought the exhaust out maybe just a little bit, one other rotation, and had the glider facing this way, it would also have been at higher, and I think it would have straightened out the, the angle of it. I like, I love Goblin, in fact, riding the glider, and I think both the glider and Goblin look equally good, but it's almost, it's almost too sharp of an increase and an incline that it doesn't look good when you have it on display. Now, keeping in mind, this is a bit of an older figure, but at the very least, um, if only they had just, again, brought it up a little bit higher and leveled it off a little bit so it wasn't such the stark incline. Or at the very least, if the incline was exactly the same and it was just simply a little higher up, it wouldn't look like it's riding so closely to whatever surface you've got it displayed on. Um, getting the look at the glider with Goblin now uh, actually on it. It does look like from the underside that the glider has the means to be posable. Looking at these points right here, they almost look like they're ball joints. Well, they you cannot move them, and any bit of bending and manipulating will likely break the little struts here, the little pistons uh, running from the outer end to the wing here. They are not posable in any way whatsoever. Even if they were posable, there really isn't any way that you'd be able to move the wings, perhaps maybe this one, but this one here has clearly been engulfed by the exhaust coming around and uh, has caught its way around the wing, which also helps to support the glider in place. The glider is of a kind of scratched aluminum. Of course, it's plastic, but the paint would give you the slight indication that it's almost like a brushed metal the way that they've just got the little lines and stuff running through it. I really do like that. It doesn't have that much in the way of a wash to it and no darker colors have been applied, but the silver is a nice treatment and it kind of gives it that sense that it's more of a classic glider than anything else. Uh, Goblin is fairly easy to attach once you kind of be able to spread the legs well enough. Um, getting it attached to the pegs can be a little tricky, but you saw that I accomplished it perfectly. Let's bring the camera back a little bit and we'll go ahead and take the goblin off of his glider. It's actually trickier to get the feet out and off the pegs than it is to put them in. 
because the one thing you have to be careful of is the little uh, looplets here, the little areas that strap around his feet. If you are prying the foot out, you may inadvertently separate this from the wing, so just be just be careful of that. A nice looking display base though. Could have been a little bit higher, could have been a little bit more leveled off, but for what it is, I do quite like it. Let's straighten out his legs. Very creaky and squeaky sort of ratcheted legs on Goblin here. Now here we have a more traditional looking Goblin. In fact, I'll actually move the glider just to the side here. One thing that's caught my attention immediately is his face sculpt. I love this head sculpt. I think I might have loved it a little bit more, granted, if he had pupils in his eyes rather than having the very lifeless stare that we're ultimately getting staring back at us. But even still, though, I do really like that head sculpt. It seems as if it is a darker plastic, and they've simply just brushed over this olive-colored green, but the end result, though, it looks very nice. I don't know if their intention was supposed to be this, but I did notice his, his one ear is bent. It does look like it's a little bit longer than the other ear, which makes me think it was supposed to be warped, but that was the way it came out of the packaging. And I almost even like the fact that it has a little bit of curl to it, so it doesn't look like... Well, it looks like it's got its own personality, too. I really do like that. Big devilish uh, sneer on his face. Big, shiny, pearly white teeth. Amongst that is a little bit of a, almost a lighter pink color in between those individual teeth, so they do stand out. Rather like the dark color that they put around the recessed areas of his eyes, right where his eyelids are, and that carries around to the side as well. Some dark coloring added in there too. Uh, in addition to that, I really do like the long nature of his hat. Goblins in the past have had some shorter hats. Some have had, well, I don't think this may take the cake for the longest point, the longest amount of hat at the back of Goblin's head here. It's got a somewhat spirally nature to it, almost like a snake-like. It's almost has got as much life to it as the mask itself. The mask is a very different contrast of color to the rest of his body. The purples are the same, the, the hat to the torso is the same, but then the scales of his arms and his legs are drastically different than the makeup of his mask lends itself a little bit to the idea that it is a mask, but some people may be slightly offset by the fact that you do see that there's a really big color jump from this color green to the green here. This has been painted one way. Here, the scales have been painted with a dry brushing of gold over top of it. I almost could have gone without the gold and just gone solely with the green, or at the very least, they could have kept the scaling and replace the gold maybe for the darker color here. Now even though this is the olive over top of the color of the plastic underneath that, we're not really actually looking at the plastic being olive, but nonetheless if they had gotten some of that dark color and went here instead of the gold, I think that would have really brought everything together. So the, the contrasting of the golds from the legs and the arms to the head is jarring at first, but then kind of understanding the nature of this being the mask, it does make sense that it may not necessarily look like the rest of his body. His body is very slender, very sleek, um, very muscular also as well. This is a slightly older Marvel Legend or Marvel uh, Select figure, so it doesn't have an ab crunch. It only really has a waist swivel, and that's really about it. The gloves and arms, very thin in nature. The legs, very, very thin in nature. Could have given slightly more pointier shoes, but not going to really nitpick that all that much. Of course, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. That would explain earlier why we were able to peg that into the place of the, the glider there. Now, his hand, if we look at his one hand, it has a pumpkin bomb already attached to it. It's It looks like it's pegged. It looks obviously like it's glued as well, so you can't remove it. They do give you, however, two pumpkin bombs. One for basically, you know, dueling it with both hands. As getting this would have been, a, you know, a nice asset to the figure. Equally so, I kind of wish that they had also given us a non-pumpkin bombed hand. That could have gone on this way as well. So you could have either gone with one pumpkin bomb, two pumpkin bombs, or you could have just left them all off completely and just given them the gloved hands instead.
the uh, the plastic here is very similar. It looks like it, it is probably going to be like a dark purple, maybe even borderline black. And like the head here, they've just painted the purple over top of that. And it works well because the little areas where the paint has been missed also adds a little bit of shading to the figure as well. There's the back of the figure there. One of the other accessories he comes included with is his little sachet purse, his little carry-all bag that allows him to hold the extra pumpkin bombs. It's slightly trickier to get over top of his head because in this instance, he's got the longer hat now to kind of wiggle that around. You can see it fits over his torso quite easily once you get past, past the point of the hat there. I suppose you could also run it up from the bottom of his legs as well, but we're, I'm working from my way from the top. I'm working my way down that way. Just to also show you how it looks with the two pumpkin bombs, wiggle the hand out of the socket, which is easier said than done. It's a very, very difficult. Uh, let me just show you the peg there. Very difficult to remove and replace. Replacing seems easier because it's simply a case of just wiggling it to get back into place like so. But taking it off, let me just show you. It almost looks like I don't want to say marring to the plastic. It could simply be a case where that plastic wasn't painted properly. But the last thing I would definitely want to start having to happen by that starting to split or crack on me. Again, so far it hasn't been the case, but as you probably saw, unless your eyes were closed, very difficult to remove the hands first and foremost. And then again, you've got the two pumpkins. It may seem a little on the excessive amount. I don't know necessarily if Goblin needs to have both pumpkin bombs in hand. But again, like, you know, you can have kind of one hand angled up, the other hand ha angled down as if he's just about to start tossing them at Spider-Man. Let's have a look at his posability. Little on the limited side, but it doesn't actually suffer as bad as one would think. His head rotates all the, technically all the way around. Although you're going to start seeing a big conflict of trying to get the hat completely around. But it does move up and down. And you technically have a slight rocking happening there as well. Uh, shoulders hinge outward. Rotate the arms all the way around. He's got the bend in the elbow. Which also lets the forearm rotate. And you can also rotate the hands. As we've already looked at, no ab crunch. But he does have the waist swivel. The sachet bag is getting in the way. Legs hinge outward via a ball joint. Forward and back happening there. Bend at the knee. Rotation on the lower leg. And then you've got solely just an ankle pivot. An ankle hinge. There's no rocking back and forth. I don't think necessarily the figure needs it. Because of the nature of, well, he's going to be displayed most likely in my collection on the supplied glider. So having an ankle rocker necessarily doesn't impede this figure. In fact, I don't even think the figure really necessarily needs it. You can chalk up not being able to find this figure as the sole reasoning why I wasn't able to review this guy earlier. I've always wanted this figure and just simply couldn't find it. And I know I could have gone on aftermarket places like eBay to scope him out, but I knew eventually uh, I'd be able to find him at my local comic book store. And I didn't really find him at my local comic book store, but I found him at a comic book store that just happened to be in the area where I was at the time. Went in, sure enough, they they had them in stock, and I think I paid about 20 to $30. I, in fact, I think it was about $29.99 for him. So he's same price point as all the other Marvel Select figures, at least here in Canada, and I'm so glad I was able to find this guy. Uh, from the Goblin standpoint of it, I do think it's one of my personal favorite head sculpts of Goblin. He could have had some pupils. I suppose I could have easily, I still could easily go in just with a pen and mark the little indications of pupils, and bingo, bango, he's got eyes. Um, that is a very small little nitpick. Uh, but the only thing I would have changed differently to this goblin is the glider that he's riding atop of. While I do like the angle of it, I think it's a little too steep, uh, steep of an incline, especially for how low he's riding on the surface, like if you have him on a shelf. He could have been a little bit higher, the glider at least, could have been a little higher up, and a maybe a little bit more leveled off. You have to admit, it's impressive to see this guy riding on his glider and then you've got all the smoke and fire coming out from the bottom exhaust area and kind of wrapping around as the making up the base for which he stands atop of. So I do really like that. Could have been a little higher, granted, yes. But overall, I really do like this uh, Green Goblin here. 
We were today having a look at the Diamond Select, not a new figure, it was 2016, but this is the Marvel Select Green Goblin. If you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of the other Marvel Select figure reviews that I've done specifically on this channel, you can go to a playlist called Marvel Select Reviews. I know somebody was yelling out Marvel Select Review. Make sure you also hit that little subscribe button down below as more videos will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.